Hey dudes, do the builder here, and in this episode of Zig Master, we're going to be taking a look at unions in Zig. A union is an interesting uh, data structure because it basically uses a single area of memory uh, where you can uh, store values of different types. But only one of those uh, fields, uh, uh, the value of one of those fields is the one that can be active at any one time. So, for example, here we have this union called number. It has two fields, float and int. The float field is an F64, which requires eight bytes of memory. And the int uh, field is an I8, which would require just one byte of memory. So the size of the union um, is going to be eight bytes because it has to allocate space for the largest type that it could possibly be. But in contrast to a struct where you have these two fields in memory, one after the other, a union will only have one of these fields active at a time. So you can see it as if you have one area of memory and depending on the active field is how you're going to interpret that area of memory. In this case, you can interpret it as an F64 or you can interpret it as an I8 depending on the active field. And this is known as a bare union because compared to the other type of union that we will see later, a tagged union, uh, a bare union doesn't have that extra information in the form of a tag, uh, which is basically like a handle to which is the active field. In the case of the bare union, you only have the information for uh, the field that is active at the time. Now, in the case of Zig, that isn't strictly true all the time. When you're in, in a safe mode, when you release safe or in debug mode, uh, they are, there's going to be safety checks to, to tell you when you're trying to access a field uh, of a union that's inactive. If you're accessing a field that's not the active field, there's going to be a safety check to protect you against that type of uh, error. And the only way to do that is uh, by having behind the scenes a tag. Okay, so even though this is a bare union, when you're in safe mode, you, you still have a tag behind the scenes that Zig is going to monitor to protect you from accessing uh, uh, a field when, when it's not active, okay? Here we have this little uh, function here called bear. And what we're going to be doing first is going to print out, we're going to be using the size of uh, built-in here to print out the size of that union. Here we're, we're uh, declaring a variable called num which is of the type of that union number. And this is the syntax, the literal syntax that we use when we want to assign uh, one of the field values. Basically here, we're saying that we want to assign the int field with the value 42. Then we print that, that value out. This is the syntax that we use to access that active field. We use uh, the, the identifier for the union with the dot and then the active field name. When we want to change the active field, what we do is assign the whole union. Once again, in this case, we're assigning the float uh, field with the value 3.1415. And here, once again, we're printing it out by using the dot syntax with the active field. Okay. So um, let's take a look at that. Let's build it. This would be a debug build. And as you can see here, um, it's telling us that the size is 16. We're going to talk about this in a moment. We access the int field and we accessed the float field. And um, you may be wondering, we have a size of 16. If we go back here to the code, the largest uh, type in this union is an F64, which is 8 bytes. So the union should be 8 bytes. But given that there's going to be that, that safety uh, enabling tag behind the scenes um, that tag is going to use just one additional byte but given the uh, the rules for alignment that we we've already seen the alignment for this union is going to be the largest alignment which in this case is eight so it would uh, necessarily have to use another eight bytes for that tag so that's why we're seeing a total of 16 bytes for the union okay if we build this let's Build this in released in release fast, and 
as you can see now the size is reduced to 8 which is just the size necessary for the largest type in the union so as we can see in, in release uh, fa in release fast and also release small you're going to have the smaller union size because you don't have the tag that enables safety checks okay so that's an important detail to have in mind when dealing with these types of, of bare unions and um, here let's see what happens let's try to access the float field for example um, let's build and run this and as you can see we're gonna get uh, uh, a runtime panic which is telling us that we are accessing uh, union field float while uh, the field int is the one that's active okay so this is indeed uh, uh, one of those safety checks that I mentioned let's build this in release fast and as you can see here when we try to access that float field when it's actually an int the active field we're gonna get uh, garbage data okay basically that's what we're getting here so uh, you have to be careful with that in in debug and safe mode you're gonna get uh, a runtime panic but when you're in a, a mode as fast or small where there are no safety checks then you could have uh, undefined behavior okay or, or garbage data um, next up what we're going to be looking at is the other type of uh, union in zig and this is a really powerful uh, type and it's known as a tagged union we are going to define here first an enum we are we already saw enums in the previous video we're calling it tag and the two fields in this enum are the same as for our union float and int and then we're uh, defining this new union called tag uh, number and here the syntax is different we're saying union but in the parentheses we're specifying uh, that this is going to be a tag union and we're going to be using this enum called tag um, I'm calling it tag but it doesn't have to be called tag and um, then inside here we have that we have our fields which has have to be the, f the same fields as the enum that we're going to be using for the tag and in the same order and once again we have that the float uh, field is f64 and this time the int field is a u8 uh, but the rules are basically the same uh, this, the, the, the space in memory is going to be um, the, the space required to hold the largest uh, type for the, for the largest field and in this case the tag union will always have the tag um, no matter the, the, the release mode that you're compiling in and here we have an example uh, we have uh, basically a method inside of a union just like in the case of enums and structs a, a union is another type of container in zig so you can have declarations like bars and consts and, and functions in this case it's going to be a method because the first uh, uh, parameter type is the same as the, the very union itself and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing here we we uh, are going to passing in the tag of the type of the enum the tag and we're going to determine if this uh, uh, union is indeed the active uh, field is indeed that tag and we can do this because the union when when you compare it like this to an enum field it will uh, coerce to the enum type okay here self is tag uh, number and tag is of type tag but we can do this comparison because there is a, a automatic coercion here for the tag union to its tag type okay so there's no problem with that and in this function here we're going to be basically doing the same thing that we were doing in the bear function but with some additional functionality first of all we, we print out the size we here once again we use the same syntax uh, for the active field here int uh, and accessing is the same syntax also here when we want to uh, assign another field another active field we assign the whole union once again the syntax is the same as in the bare union but one thing that we can do that we cannot do with uh, the bare union 
here we're comparing, as I said, we can compare the union, uh, an instance of it, to just the tag, one of the fields of the tag. And this is really handy here. We, we just want to see if this uh, instance of the tag number is indeed the float uh, instance or active field. And if it is, then we print out this message. Also here now, we once again, we now we're changing it back to the int active field. And here we have an example of how we can switch on a tagged union. Um, and the, each of the prongs of the switch can be, once again, one of those literals from our uh, tag type enum. So here, int and float. And depending on the active type, then is the prong that's going to be selected. Okay. So um, here, finally, we are going to be uh, calling our method, okay, uh, is, and passing in, once again, uh, a literal of our um, tag enum type, okay? So let's go here to main. Let's uncomment this. Let's go and run this. Okay, and here now, as you can see, the size of tag number is 16. We have the value for the int when it's active, the value for the float when it's active. And here it's a float. So you can see that comparison that we did in the if conditional. Here um, we have that in our switch, uh, the variant that was active is the int. So that's the prong that was uh, selected. And finally, we called our method and it's asking if num is int and it's telling us that it's true. Okay. So um, let's go back here and let's see one additional detail um, that we can do here with the tagged union. Let's uh, comment out this code for the tag and is that you can have this syntax union enum and the, the tag enum will then be created automatically for you okay based on the fields of the union uh, basically that enum that's going to be created is going to have these same fields just like we did here explicitly okay but then the only issue that you would have is that if, if you have a function like we have here um, and we explicitly were, were using that uh, type of our tag enum, then what would you specify here? Well, you have a special function in stud meta called tag and we specify here the type tag number. And what this will return is indeed the type of the tag for this uh, tagged union uh, called tag number. Okay, so that basically will give us once again that same functionality. Let's save this um, and let's move over. Let's clear the screen. Let's build and run it. And as you can see, we have the exam, uh, the same exact uh, functionality. Let's build and run this in release fast to make sure that the size of this tag union is the same. As you can see, it is indeed 16 bytes because the tag is going to use another 8 bytes due to the alignment issue. Okay. So basically with that, that's what I wanted to cover about unions. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to be seeing a uh, real world practical use of a tag union, which is really powerful in Zig. Um, and it's basically how you can implement an, a type of interface in Zig using tag unions. Okay. So I hope you find this useful. Dude the Builder here. I'll see you in the next one.